again, welcome to our first beautiful, blessed outdoor service this summer. It's great to see you all here. Hello to you joining us online. A special call out to my kids watching from Florida. <laughs> um, wherever you are this morning, here or online, God has surrounded us with his beauty and his presence. Just sitting here or wherever you are, you can hear and see things around you. The wind in the trees, birds singing, babies crying and laughing, people hugging and talking. Maybe you're outside on your deck at home or snuggled up on your couch or in bed, recovering from an illness. But wherever you are, here we are, surrounded by the goodness of God. Will you join me for just a couple of moments of silence to enjoy him? I ask that you clear your hearts and your minds of everything you maybe have planned for today when you leave here for this week coming up. Take a couple of deep breaths in and out and just take a moment to enjoy him. Amen. So before we get started, I just want to thank Paul. If you guys remember back when he started week one, he did a video that talked about our summer teaching team. And he said that it was a group of young new staff members. Well, since I've been here for five and a half years, I figured that includes me in the young part. So I'm excited. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> so here we are in week three of our summer series on the book of James, counterfeit faith. Counterfeit, it also means false or fake, right? Does that sound harsh to you? Yep, it sure does, and it is. So let me ask you, how many of you have that friend or family member that tells it like it is? They blurt it out, they tell you exactly what they're thinking in the moment, no hesitation. <laughs> I know I have some of those. <laughs> well, that's exactly how James rolls. You have seen and will continue to see that in this series. He uses some tough to take words and phrases. He calls it like he sees it, but he did it for their good, for our good, for redirection. So I pray that when we leave this series, you are not feeling judged or shamed, convicted, but rather redirected. Redirected to or recentered on your relationship with God. Now our theme has been our actions and deeds should authenticate our faith. Now I know now that being said, I'm going to take us right to the book of Matthew. I know we're talking about James and I promise we're going to get there. This is just for a bit of a reminder, a tie-in, if you will. It's Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, I don't know about you guys, but there was a time that I thought, whew, I don't have a lot of money or a whole lot of things anyway, so I must be right as rain. But then, over time, I learned that it's not just about money and stuff. A thief can take on many forms and can steal your parents, your spouse, a child, your business, your job, a loved one. And what about addiction to drugs, alcohol, pornography, gambling, or even working too much? Is an addiction a thief? 
Can't all those steal from you and the ones you care about the most? The answer is yes. So I ask you this. Who or what is your treasure? And is it authentic or counterfeit? That's why when we see James getting upset with the way these Christ followers he is addressing these things to are acting. He's asking himself that same question. Have they lost sight of the true treasure? Has their faith become fake, false, counterfeit? Now let's take a look at where James is coming from. He says in chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? So we are in turmoil. That turmoil gives way to arguments and fights with others. You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Now I know you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, I ask, and I do the same. I know I have and I do ask God for things all the time. Then James says in verse 3, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss or with wrong motives to spend it on your passions. So what he is saying is we are missing the mark with our requests and prayers. Our motives for what we ask for are wrong. So I'm going to ask you again, who or what is your treasure? And is it authentic or counterfeit? Now, how many of you notice a lot of I and me when you're talking or praying to God? I know I do. Now, some of you know most of my story. Some of you know pieces of my story. And some of you here don't know me or my story at all. I was raised Methodist. Can't remember a time growing up that my family didn't belong to a church. Several of them, actually, because my dad was in the Navy and we moved around a lot when I was young. My brother and I were baptized, confirmed. We went to Sunday school, youth group, youth retreats, and trips. So I can't remember a time that I didn't believe in Jesus. Sounds pretty great, right? So how does this tie into what James is saying? Well, let's fast forward to 2003, and I was coming out of a mostly difficult 14-year marriage. Joe and I were co-parenting and sharing joint custody of our two amazing kids, Kiara and Eric. He had his days with them and I had mine, which were great. I was very committed to their sports and school, social events, doctor's appointments, and so on. But on the days that my kids were with their dad, I was free to do what I wanted. And I was ready for something different, the perfect life finding the right guy, you know, Prince Charming, the one that I thought I had been missing out on for all of those years. A side note, I was married at 19, was pregnant with my first child four months later. So this was newfound freedom to do my thing. That's when I turned to God and I said, I trust you, I need you, right? wrong. <laughs> I was angry at him. He surely didn't show up when I asked him to before. So why would I turn to him now? Remember what James said in verse one about war and turmoil inside ourselves? That was me. So I went after the life I wanted, the happiness I wanted and deserved. Now you remember before when I asked if we use a lot of eyes and me's, <laughs> notice all of my eyes here, three of them in one sentence to be exact. <laughs> now 
my focus wasn't on asking for more of him. It was asking for more of me, for me. There's the me's. Verse 4 reads, now, okay, I told you he uses harsh words and phrases, so here we go. He says, you adulterous people. Basically, what he is saying is, you cheaters. <laughs> Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity, meaning hatred or ill will with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And that's exactly where I found myself, an enemy of God. He wasn't part of my life at that point. I never thought that he didn't exist. I had just written him out of my story. Now moving forward about four years in 2007, and I'm living the dream, right? <laughs> Wrong again. I was behind on my bills, lying, keeping secrets, spending my money on going out with friends, drinking, cigarettes, and men. I found myself addicted to men and pornography. I wasn't the mother, daughter, sister, friend, or employee that I once was. I was the furthest from God that I had ever been in my whole life. And then, to top it all off, my ex-husband Joe started taking our kids to church. Reading the Bible, fasting, praying, and worshiping, they all had accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They were all baptized, all the while inviting me to join them. But there was no way. I was still angry. And there was no way I was going to let Joe receive the glory of turning his life around and taking our kids to a relationship with Christ. I had tried that years earlier. We as a family had tried that in the past. You know, showing up on Sunday and not changing a dang thing Monday through Saturday. No way. I wanted no part of it. Now recently, my small group, a shout out to my Glow Girls, did a study on James by Francis Chan, which is available on Right Now Media. You can find a link on our website. Everyone has free access to that. In fact, the Devo and the QR codes that we are using for this series are from that on Right Now Media. I strongly encourage any of you to take time to go through that. Now he explains verse four like this, and I ask you to listen closely. I quote, you could have this relationship with God that is so fulfilling, but instead you're thinking that you need something else. So you are actually asking the one who loves you to give you something else that would replace him to actually bring you pleasure. Let me repeat that for you. <laughs> you could have this relationship with God that is so fulfilling, but instead you're thinking that you need something else, someone else. So you are actually asking the one who loves you to give you something that would replace him to actually bring you pleasure. Now, maybe that's not as profound for all of you, but when we were doing the study, I think I hit the reset on that part like seven times because it needed to sink in. It really made me think back to that time in my life and many other times. Did I? 
do I actually use God? Am I an adulterer? A cheater in my relationship with God? And the answer is yes. James reminds them and us and goes on to say in verse 5, Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? My friends, yes. He is jealous that we choose and ask for other things instead of him. He desires us to choose him. The spirit in each of us was designed to choose him, not the things of this world. So I ask you again, how and for what are you praying? Who or what is your treasure? And is it authentic or counterfeit? Okay. Here comes a good part, but I love that word. Verses six through 10, verse six says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. I know. Harsh words. But verse 10 says this, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you, lift you up. He will exalt you. Now, when I think of grace, I think of forgiveness. Truly understanding forgiveness was a life changer for me. So my children kept inviting me to come to service with them. For my daughter, I attended a women's event with her at the church that they were attending. I felt so out of place. And then I felt shame. How could God even want me at this point? I left there feeling more broken. Not long after that, they invited me to another church where a guest Brazilian pastor was going to speak. So reluctantly, I went. I didn't even sit with them. Sunday was their dad's day. And of course, I was still angry. <laughs> so I sat a couple of rows behind them. The pastor's message that night was on forgiveness. Now I know about forgiveness. And I've heard it before. But that night was different. Maybe because it was in Portuguese. Not sure. And yes, I do understand Portuguese. <laughs> I cried through the entire service. <laughs> he talked of God's forgiveness and his love. And that it was never too late. And you could never have done too much for him to not welcome you back with open arms. He spoke of asking for forgiveness and giving forgiveness and forgiving yourself. In that moment, I was able to release all that I had been carrying to God. He had given us some time at the end of service to be in prayer by ourselves to get right with God, to ask for forgiveness, to figure out a plan of how you were going to forgive someone. Would it be in person? Would it be alone with yourself? Still crying, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I looked up to the pastor standing there. He told me 
that by the grace and love of God that I was forgiven. But he also said, if there's anything else or anyone else you need to resolve anything with that's here tonight, that I shouldn't leave without doing so. So without hesitation, I stood up, went to Joe, asked him to step off to the side. There was a little room off the side of the sanctuary. And I asked him to forgive me for any and all the things that I had done to hurt him. And I forgave him for all of the things he had done and said to hurt me. I realized in that very moment, it wasn't about Joe getting the glory. It was about God getting the glory for the change in all of us. Later on, I asked my children for forgiveness and it was like a weight had been lifted. With time and learning to forgive myself, maybe one of the hardest ones to do, I get it, I've been there. My life changed. I started attending church again, worked on all of my bad habits, <laughs> and I was baptized in the Atlantic Ocean by my ex-husband, Joe, who is now a pastor. <laughs> He and his family have been friends and more like family. Along with them, my children and grandchildren and my family, they are my greatest gift. But they are not my treasure. Just as James stated, those not so easy to hear statements in verses seven through nine, I had to cleanse my hands, purify my heart, and humble myself before the Lord. Now, 15 years later, <laughs> do I still need to hit the refresh button? Do I need to ask myself if I'm being authentic or counterfeit? Absolutely. <laughs> but I know who and where my treasure is. Now, some of you that are here today or watching online, you are feeling something. The spirit is stirred in you and you have been living, thinking that there is no way to or back to Christ. I and many others around you are living proof that that is simply not true. More than anything, God desires a personal relationship with you. It's not too late. You haven't messed up too much or been gone for too long. If you are feeling that this is the time to commit or recommit your life to Christ, will you close your eyes at this time, wherever you are, online, here, Focus on him. I ask that you don't worry about anyone or anything around you and repeat this aloud with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, before we go for today, I would like to share a couple of next steps. I know that Ryan gave you an amazing download of everything we have coming and everything that's going on this summer. But I ask if you just prayed that prayer or you already know that baptism is your next step, 
you will want to sign up for our baptism information class coming up on August 8th. There will be one for adults and students and another for family and kids. Then, once you've gone through that, you are all set for August 28th, which is Splash. We come together for an amazing outdoor experience full of worship, fellowship, food, fun, and of course, baptisms, the main reason for our event. You won't want to miss it. If you are a new believer or new to your faith, we have a class coming this fall called Alpha. Now sign up will end up being on our website, so I just ask that you be aware of that, keep looking for that. I'm sure that dates will be given once that is available for sign up, but highly encouraged. And finally, we have a prayer tent off to my left here. If you just prayed that prayer, or you need prayer for any reason, if you want to share a praise, please come. There is a group making their way here that are amazing, beautiful, and broken people, just like you and me, that would love to talk with you, pray with you, or answer any questions you might have. Will you pray with me? Father, you are good. This place is good. Wherever people are watching online, you are good. We give you, Father, the glory for this beautiful day, for this coming week. I pray for blessings over each and every person that is desiring more of you, that their relationship with you, Father, would look new and different and reconnected. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all things. It's in your name we pray. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Have an amazing week, and we look forward to seeing you next week.